We have introduced a new approach to portfolio formation called full scale optimization, which offers an alternative to mean variance optimization. Mean variance optimization is the standard approach used by most sophisticated investors to determine a portfolio's allocation to different assets. It requires investors to estimate each asset's expected return and standard deviation, as well as the correlation between each pair of assets. These values are typically based on historical returns, although investors often adjust expected returns to reflect their views. These summary statistics are all of the information required by mean variance optimization. It pays no attention to individual returns or other features of the distribution. It discards this information, which greatly simplifies the process of forming portfolios. This stripped down approach to portfolio formation usually performs quite well, given a narrow view of investor preferences. These preferences are described by a utility function, which maps wealth onto a measure of happiness or satisfaction. Investors typically assume that utility functions are smooth and concave, which implies that happiness increases as wealth increases, but at a diminishing rate. If the relationship between wealth and happiness is best described by a smooth concave curve, then mean variance optimization will almost always identify the optimal portfolio whether or not returns are normally distributed. This outcome is particularly convenient because it means that investors need not pay attention to individual returns or the higher moments of return distributions. With relatively little information and computational power, they can identify the asset weights that yield the maximum level of utility or happiness. Sophisticated investors have relied on mean variance optimization to form portfolios for half a century, and in most instances, it has served them well. The world of investing has grown more complicated, however, with the introduction of option-based strategies, commodities, emerging market securities and hedge funds. Unlike traditional stocks and bonds, these assets do not always produce normally distributed returns. Many hedge funds, for example, produce distributions that are negatively skewed rather than symmetrical, and a greater fraction of their returns lie at the extremes of the distributions rather than near the center. Commodity returns, like hedge funds, tend to have a relatively large fraction of extreme returns, but unlike hedge funds, they produce positively skewed return distributions. In some cases, two assets will have the same standard deviation, but the volatility from one asset will be caused mainly by positive deviations from the mean, while the volatility of the other asset will be caused mainly by negative deviations. Because mean variance optimization penalizes positive deviations as much as negative deviations, it will fail to identify the optimal portfolio. The extent to which mean variance optimization will fail depends on the shape of the investor's utility curve. If investor preferences are indeed represented by a smooth concave utility function, the errors arising from non-normal distributions will not be significant. The real world, however, does not always conform to the convenient descriptions of utility which facilitate clever solutions. It imposes myriad complexities which defy clever solutions. For example, utility does not always change smoothly with wealth. It may change abruptly at a particular level of wealth, resulting in a kinked utility function rather than a smooth function. There are a variety of reasons why utility might change abruptly at a particular level of wealth. Some investors, for example, might violate loan covenants if their assets fall below a specified threshold. Other investors face regulatory mandates that require a minimum level of reserves. And often fund managers are terminated when asset values breach loss thresholds. It is natural to expect utility to drop abruptly and sharply when these thresholds are breached. Mean variance optimization does not perform well when returns are not normally distributed and utility functions depart from the smooth concave curves that we find in finance textbooks but not always in the real world. We offer a new approach to portfolio optimization which enables investors to identify optimal portfolio weights given any plausible description of investor utility, taking into account the entire sample of asset returns. Our new approach is called full-scale optimization. Rather than relying on summary statistics, full-scale optimization uses all of the returns in the sample, 
the same returns that were discarded by mean variance optimization. By considering every return produced by each asset, full-scale optimization takes into account all of the features of return distributions. The principle of full-scale optimization is quite simple. It begins by considering a particular asset mix. It then calculates the utility of this asset mix for a chosen utility function, taking into account every single return in the sample. It then repeats this process over and over again, each time substituting a different asset mix until it finds the asset mix that yields the highest level of utility. Although the concept is simple, the mechanics of full-scale optimization are not. It requires sophisticated search algorithms and enormous computational power. But the results are worth the sophistication and computational effort, because the weights that result from full-scale optimization are truly optimal. Compare them to the results generated by mean variance optimization. It is quite clear that by discarding important information about return distributions, mean variance optimization leads many investors to misallocate their portfolios, and by a significant margin. For investors faced with the challenge of allocating portfolios to non-traditional assets, such as option-based strategies, commodities, emerging market securities and hedge funds, full-scale optimization offers a superior solution.